What's up guys? My name is Jake. Welcome to Abandoned, episode 14. This is the show where we talk about some of the coolest abandoned places in the world. As always, before we start, I do want to give a quick shout out to our amazing followers on Instagram and our amazing followers on Twitter. You guys are literally amazing. So today we are going to talk about one of the most heavily requested places, Giaga Lake Amusement Park. So to give you a little overview, the Giaga Lake Amusement Park is a theme park located in Aurora, Ohio. The park is named after the lake it was built on, and it is one of two parks on the lake. The history actually dates back quite a long time ago. In 1872, the land was established as a picnic and swimming area for the then named Giles Lake. In 1889, the land took a major shift into an amusement park when it officially offered a steam-powered carousel. In 1925, the Big Dipper roller coaster was completed and was the largest roller coaster in the entire world at that point. After a massive fire which costed an estimate $500,000 in damages, the park was put into seasonal operation in 1952. After a few years, Funtime Incorporated purchased the park in 1969. Almost immediately after, SeaWorld leased the land across the lake to build SeaWorld Ohio. After its 1970 opening, the two parks continued to add attractions and grow. In 1995, Jaga Lake was purchased by Premier Parks. This was a really big deal for the park, as it was no longer owned by Funtime Inc. Premier Parks was becoming big. The company went public in 1996 with just threw money into the vaults, specifically $70 million for the company at $18 per share. In 1997, the company began buying more parks. With all of this cash flow, the company made a big ticket purchase. How big? Well, in 1998, they purchased Six Flags for a reported $1.86 billion. After this, the company began renaming many of the parks that they bought to the Six Flags name. In 2000, Premier Parks assumed the name Six Flags Theme Park Inc., which is probably why if you look up Premier Parks, you probably won't find it. In the same year, Geauga Lake's name was officially changed to Six Flags Ohio. During this time, $40 million was spent to upgrade and extend the park. However, on the other side, literally, SeaWorld Ohio offered to buy Six Flags Ohio, but was quickly denied. However, after this, Six Flags actually bought SeaWorld Ohio not too long after, with the plans of combining both parks. So, with that, both parks opened up as Six Flags World of Adventure in 2001. The first sign of downfall for the park was apparent when Six Flags began considering putting the park up for sale since the company was facing some serious financial trouble. These financial troubles actually put Six Flags into Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in 2009. The company did end up exiting after its restructuring in 2010. Anyways, in March 2004, Cedar Fair, the owner of Cedar Point, announced they would be acquiring the property for $145 million. Almost immediately, all branding and IPs that came with Six Flags completely left. Many rides had their names changed, as well as most of the marine life portions, which were left over from SeaWorld. The name was once again switched back to its original, Geauga Lake. It's good to be back. Geauga Lake, it's gonna be fun. Ooh, sick burn. In 2005, the company invested $26 million for a new water park named Wild Water Kingdom to be placed on the former SeaWorld site. This forced yet another name change to incorporate the second park. As the summer season of 2007 rolled in, rumors were ramping up on how the park was set to close permanently. Cedar Fair refused to speak on the matter, however, with the silence of the company, the decline was quite apparent. On June 16th, the Raging Wolf Bob's Coaster closed permanently after a derailing. As we know, this is never good. <laughs> Following the end of the summer season, on September 21st, 2007, the announcement came that no one wanted to hear. After a meeting with their board of directors, Cedar Fair announced that the amusement park portion of Geauga Lake would be permanently closed. Uh, basically, our board of directors uh, made the decision yesterday afternoon uh, that the market demand simply isn't there to support the park as it's currently structured. Um, the decision was made to operate the park exclusively as a water park only. 
The park was 120 years old when it closed, and I think it's safe to say that it angered a few people. The closure, to be fair, did kind of make sense. There wasn't many hotels in the area, no major highways around, and Cedar Point wasn't too far away. So what happened to the park? Well, following its closure, the majority of the coasters were removed and actually relocated. Towards the summer of 2008, the majority of the park's remnants were sold at auction, which led to a good chunk of the park being removed or demolished. The 91-year-old wooden roller coaster, the Big Dipper, was attempted to be sold at auction for just $9,500. If you're thinking, as many of you are, of buying it for the cars, it's not going to work. The coaster has been graciously and generously offered to American coaster enthusiasts and other groups. And that is not false, young ladies. Get security or get her out of here. The park was put up for sale in 2008, and since then the property has looked pretty rough. Today, the park still sits completely abandoned right across from the water park, which actually still does operate seasonally. All that stands today is the Big Dipper coaster, some small buildings, the park's entrance, and the majority of the parking lot. Many foundations and concrete moldings are still in place. So what does the future hold? Well, it's hard to say. The best possible case would be a theme park of some sort, or maybe a restoration to the original park, a museum maybe. However, with no one wanting the land, in 2013, Cedar Fair announced they would be willing to sell the land in parcels for the first time in the property's history. Recently, Geauga Lake has been in the interest of many for the location of sound stages, as Ohio's filming locations has grown more popular. Recently though, the Meyer Superstore chain has signed a contract to purchase a 41-acre portion of the land to build one of its stores on. Nothing is final, but a spokesperson has said the earliest the chain would open a store would be 2018. So is Cedar Fair really to blame for this? Eh, probably. To be fair though, if the park was left in Six Flags' hands, it probably wouldn't have survived him much longer. Again, it's hard to say. The way Cedar Fair has treated the property though is kinda sad. I would expect something more from the people who own Canada's Wonderland. Oh wait. Seriously though, out of all the abandoned places we've done, I honestly think this is the saddest one. When a park carries that much history, and is such a massive landmark to millions, it shouldn't be treated this way. Hell, clearing the land would be more respectful than what they're doing. At the end of the day though, the park made so many people happy, and really that's all that matters. It began with the intent to make families happy, and I think they succeeded for a solid 120 years. This place, no matter what it becomes, will live on with the people who got to enjoy it. It's definitely a landmark in American theme park history. But that's it for me guys, thank you so much for watching, if you have any memories from Geauga Lake, feel free to leave a comment. Also, a few weeks ago we opened a small t-shirt shop where you can get some pretty sick t-shirts from us, so if you're interested there will be a link in the description. My name is Jake, and thank you very much for watching. Four-year-old <laughs> 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 <laughs>